my name is Douglas Bach. I'm an author and depression survivor. Welcome to your Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Uh, what I want to discuss this week is my recent hospitalization in the psychiatric ward here in Portland. I actually stayed from January 5th to January 30th, 25 days in the psych ward. Uh, this was the culmination of a year-long depression I'd been suffering from. The month of December was particularly bad. I was disintegrating, and my partner thought that being in the hospital would be a good idea because it would provide a safe place for me to possibly recover. Another advantage of being in the hospital is that I could do inpatient ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, something I'd been wanting to do for a long time. People often ask me, what does a typical day in the psychiatric ward look like? Well, the day started when, at 7.45 a.m., a booming voice came out over the loudspeaker saying, it's time for breakfast. Not being a morning person, I stumbled into the day room where I joined the other patients. I usually had ordered oatmeal or cream of wheat, some yogurt, and some scrambled eggs. Now, I don't know how they did it, but they make the scrambled eggs taste like mud. They didn't even look like eggs, and uh, I'm used to having an egg for breakfast. I tried ordering a hard-boiled egg, wasn't available. Lunch and dinner were no different where the vegetables were all overcooked, the salmon was overdone, and so was the chicken. This was typical hospital food, I'm afraid, and not very conducive to healing in any sense of the word. After breakfast, the day began. Now, this day consisted of a series of groups that went from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., and here are some of the titles of the groups. Um, mindfulness, Coping Skills, Distress Tolerance, Emotional Regulation, Self-Empowerment, Recovery Tips uh, for Alcoholics and Addicts, and my favorite, Art Therapy. Uh, while I found most of the groups boring, uh, at least in Art Therapy you could work with your hands and produce something tangible. And I'd like to share with you some of the things I did. I have a whole pile of them upstairs in my house, but uh, here's, here's one thing. We, we worked in coloring books a lot, and here's a little mandala I did. Very pretty, uh, using colored pens. And uh, here's another one. This says, A River of Support and Healing. And it talks about all the, the things that inspire me and hopefully I can get into after I leave the hospital. A River of Support and Healing. Aside for poor food, the, the other limitation in the hospital was lack of exercise. There was no gym where you could work out, only a stationary bike that you were allowed to go on for 15 minutes. And the bike wasn't even that new. It ran on batteries, so you can imagine how you know, weak the, the pedals were, and it was just, you could barely even work up a sweat. Uh, it was a locked ward. Again, no going outside, not even just to be out there, just to enjoy you know, the scenery and nice weather. Uh, if you were on a special list, which I was, you could go out for 15 minutes in a rock garden, and that was it. Now, even people in prison have more ability to exercise as they go into the yard, maybe for a half hour or an hour, and, uh, you know, do what they want to do. There was an important difference, however. Even though this felt like a prison, because I entered voluntarily, at any time I could have signed out. So the listener or viewer might ask, well, if you're having such a bummed out time, why did you sign out? It was because I knew I needed to be here. I knew I needed to continue the ECT T treatments I was getting, and uh, the pluses outweighed the negatives. Another thing that drove me crazy about being in the unit was the overhead lighting. I don't like overhead lighting. It's really hard on my eyes. I prefer indirect lighting. Unfortunately, there was a ban on all lamps because evidently the staff was afraid that people would use the cords to strangle themselves. Now, this no strangle zone actually uh, went ahead and applied to iPhones and any cell phone because the staff thought that we might use the charging cords of the iPhone to strangle ourselves, even though those things are very thin and not that long. Nevertheless, whenever my battery was low, I'd have to take it to the nurse's station where they would take it to a special room. They'd take the iPhone to a special room and plug it in uh, to number 538, uh, charger number 538. That was what my room was. So I now think of my uh, iPhone as charger 538. Now, there were some things that were positive about the hospital experience. The first was the wraparound structure. Uh, from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, everything was laid out for me to do. 
Now, when I was on the outside, I had a really difficult time creating structure for myself. I wasn't working. I wasn't uh, uh, doing hardly anything. And so all that free time drove me nuts. Didn't have to worry about that in the hospital. The day was laid out. Uh, another thing was the patients. Most of them suffered from anxiety or depression, which is what I was dealing with. And so uh, they were understanding of my condition and they were generally approachable and quite kind. I actually made two friends on the unit. In addition, the staff was great. They were compassionate, they were gentle, and they helped to create a feeling of safety. They were the exact opposite of big nurse in one flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> whenever I had a problem, whenever I needed some support, some understanding, they were there to comfort me. Now I'd like to make just a general comment about the psychiatric ward. When I was 19 years old and going to NYU, I volunteered uh, for a semester to be an aide in a local mental hospital. Now I had these expectations that when I walked in, I'd see people, you know, true lunatics, people flying, you know, or hanging from the rafters or foaming at the mouth. Or I, I don't know what I thought, but I thought people would be crazy, unquote crazy. So imagine my surprise when I walked in and I saw just normal people sitting around, eating, talking. In fact, I couldn't tell the staff from the patients. Well, this is very uh, similar to the psych ward that I was in uh, last month. Uh, I, I want to just emphasize its total normalcy, uh, that people were not acting crazy. Uh, they were suffering from depression or anxiety. And on the surface, they looked just fine because depression and anxiety are things that happen inside of us and torment us from within. So again, um, it was a very pleasant place to be, except for the, the bad lighting, the bad food, lack of exercise, things I've talked about. But the actual people and you know, the uh, way they acted were just, were just fine. Finally, another blessing that occurred to me in the hospital was all the people who came and visited me. The staff said I had broken a record. In all, there were 26 people who came over the three and a half weeks, and many of them came multiple times. This reminded me of the scene, last scene in, in the film, It's a Wonderful Life, where all of Jimmy Stewart's friends show up and help pay off an $8,000 debt. Uh, all these people coming to see me and extending themselves reminded me that I was very much loved. And this was an important antidote to the suicidal thoughts that were flooding my mind during many of the days at the hospital. Uh, I realized that if I did hurt myself, I would hurt all these people who came to visit me and uh, not just them, but other folks as well. So uh, I was dealing with suicidal thoughts, but anytime someone showed up, I realized that I had a reason to live. Here's a final ironic note. One of the side effects of ECT that I was experiencing in the hospital, and I will do a video on ECT, uh, was the loss of short-term memory. Thus, after I got out of the hospital, I forgot at least half of the people, maybe three quarters of the people who had visited me. A friend would say, don't you remember I visited you and told you to write in your journal? I had no recollection. Uh, fortunately, the people forgave me because they realized this was not something I was doing intentionally. It was a side effect of the ECT. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want to find out more about my work, uh, go to the website healingfromdepression.com or click on the links in the closing credits. And until we meet again, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you.